But in the process of trying to be seen and to be heard, they resist. And what are they resisting? Not conforming, but the universe itself. Jumbo, fellow adventurers, I'm Mike Dooley, here to remind you once more that your thoughts become things. And I'm going to do it today by dropping another edition of a week's worth of spiritual tune-ups. These were broadcasted live this week. My answers to fellow adventurers' questions about life, dreams, and happiness. And each one took 5, 10, or 15 minutes. We've sewn them all together for your viewing and listening enjoyment. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Jumbo, fellow adventurers, it's great to be back in the saddle doing spiritual tune-ups after a week off. Thank you so much. Hope you had an amazing Thanksgiving week. I did. Today's question, and by the way, thanks for the questions you post down below on Facebook and Instagram. Special shout out to my Infinite Possibility members. I give your questions the highest priority. Mike, why do people sometimes or chronically engage in self-sabotage? Now, this is one of those words or angles or fears that I think a lot of folks have. And we tend to assess the world around us with our physical senses, and we recognize that all of our dreams haven't come true. And we think that means something must be wrong with us. And we can't think of what is wrong with us, so we deduce, I must be self-sabotaging. I must be afraid to succeed. Last week, I, or the week before, I spoke about the fear of success and how it's pretty much non-existent. But there is a fear of self-sabotage, and it does, sure enough, happen unintentionally from time to time. It is rather rare. It is not something people do on purpose. Um, it comes from uh, a fear possessed by those who believe they are vulnerable, which is all of us to a degree. Okay, that's understandable. But to those who feel really vulnerable, who feel like they're not being seen, who feel like they're not being heard, who feel like they're disappearing in a crowd, that, that they're not being recognized. Those folks feeling extremely vulnerable are rather terrified of going along with the masses, of doing anything remotely conformist, um, remotely designed to fit in. And they are suspicious of anything that may be Others trying to corral them into behaving in a predictable way. You know, getting the normal job, aspiring to wealth and abundance, being surrounded by wealth and uh, friends and laughter, um, having a lot of likes on Facebook. This type of person who's so afraid of disappearing is probably not even going to be on social media. They feel like everything they do in a, in a conforming sense erodes their power and makes them invisible. And it is not that they want to self-sabotage, but in the process of trying to be seen and to be heard, they resist. And what are they resisting? Not conforming, but the universe itself. And by no means would I ever suggest anybody do anything to conform. Don't do anything ever that you haven't thought about with your mind and your heart. Be there if it's good for you. But to deny, but to renounce, uh, to resist, just because everyone else is doing it and they think you should do it. And who am I? I'm not your puppet. And so we see this with vaccines, although there's good cause to, in some cases, not get a vaccine. We see this with uh, conforming in careers or, or not keeping a job. It's not that they're self-sabotaging intentionally, but they don't want to become invisible. How, how impossible is that? But yet, perhaps those with less experience in time and space who are not so readily able to see the magic and wonders around them and within them feel that they can disappear. So they resist. And resisting, they stem off the flow of life, the very life force that 
supports them, sustains them. And the consequences would well be described or defined as self-sabotage. Now, one question for you, because most people do not self-sabotage. Don't jump to the conclusion, I want it, don't have it, must be self-sabotaging. That's not the case at all. Most people do not self-sabotage. To know whether or not you're a self-saboteur, self-saboteur, uh, trying to put my French on that, um, ask yourself, you know, or watch yourself. Are you in a perpetually resistant mode? Are you perpetually denying, perpetually pushing back? Okay. Now, that's a lot, perpetually. There are those who do that. And those are the ones who are literally shutting off the force of life before it reaches them. And, and this is bringing about consequences that they are not very fond of. To, to, to catch yourself, to prevent this from happening to you, number one, don't assume that it has. Everyone has resistance. That's completely normal, especially on a cold day. Nobody wants to get out of bed. But, um, but monitor your resistance levels. And then... The person who thinks that everyone else is gullible, the person who thinks that everyone else is crazy, it's them. And if you're that person, the only sane one in the room, this is your invitation to reconsider. You're not being surrounded by Einsteins or Buddhas. Um, but hey, if you are consistently the odd one out, this bears some self-reflection and you can get to unraveling the confusion that made you feel invisible by taking the invitation, uh, no longer stubbing your toe, no longer self-sabotaging, by, by checking out the machinery inside, the deductive reasoning inside. Does it make sense inside? If everybody's saying yay, that does not mean you should say yay. But if everybody's saying yay, um, it might be worth a second look. Jumbo, fellow adventurers, today's question, oh, led me to some places I've never been to in thought and it brought a lot of clarity. It's a very simple question, but with profound meaning. can make the difference between have and have not. Okay, the difference, the question is, Mike, explain the difference between idle daydreaming and constructive daydreaming visualization. Woo! First off, baseline for all manifestations, reality creation in these jungles of time and space, thoughts become things. It's the end all be all of living the life of your dreams, changing circumstances, becoming, doing, and having whatever your heart desires. It's all thoughts become things. Nothing else matters as much. It is your ultimate card of privilege, okay? I, I won't say what I was going to say. Uh, it's your ultimate trump card, okay? Um, so I had to say it. So here's the deal. Um, not all thoughts are the same. Uh, in ways that you may not consider. Um, now, a good thought... A bad thought, as you've heard me say before, that's judgment. One person's good thought is another person's bad thought. Thoughts don't know the difference. The manifesting properties beneath them don't know the difference. But thoughts, as I've shared before, in alignment with truth, those become things really fast. Now, daydreaming versus creative visualization. Oh, now we've got intention involved. We've got desire involved. We've got passion involved. And the door that blew open as I was um, thinking about the answer to this question is the following. Where we point our thoughts, like a flashlight in the dark, where we aim our thinking mechanism um, is, is very benign and it is very... Uh, important in that it allows the energy to flow in those directions, okay? Not, not good, not bad, but your pointing mechanism, where you point that thing, allows the energy to flow. It is not your thoughts 
that actually become the things and events of your life. It is the energy, the, the spirit, if you will, that follows your thoughts. Now, maybe perhaps in a deeper sense, it's the same, same. Your thoughts and the energy that follows them. I have to think about this deeper. But it's your aiming mechanism is your creative visualization, is your idle daydreaming. In and of itself, it doesn't move mountains or, or turn into a manifestation. But the energy that you send has the ability to transform itself into the things and events, the circumstances, best friends of your life. So the question is not only aim, but the quality of the energy that's coming forth. And so if the energy is intention, now creative visualization, constructive visualization is all about intention. I don't have it. I want it. Intention. That's a very powerful energy. Desire is intention. Desire is a recognition of lack or, or incompleteness um, with the presumption that you could be made whole. And so if you're pointing that thing with an energy of becoming whole, very similar to intention. Intention, desire, not the same, but very, very similar, very powerful. Expectation, very, very powerful. This is your beliefs. I think this will happen. Those kind of energies combined with your focus is all powerful. So if you're just idly daydreaming, there's not intention, there's not desire, there's just amusement, there's just possibilities, there's just it's going to have a very, very low impact on changing the circumstances of your life. It counts. It counts a little bit. But if you have some constructive visualization where you're like, I see it done in my mind. I give thanks in advance. It's so much fun to be who I am and where I am and having all that I have as if you were already there. That's a totally different kind of energy. Love. Truth, when you're closing your eyes and this is the energy that you're um, channeling into realms where the unseen exists, soon there will be the seen. So this is the main thing I wanted to share with you. It's not as if all thoughts are the same. Thoughts are actually a pointing mechanism to unleash the energy. Call it the same. Uh, maybe it is. I have to parse that some more. But the aiming mechanism uh, has less to do with the manifestation than the energy behind it. And when the energy behind it is loving, in truth, empowering, of service, uh, for your joy, bing, bang, boom. Thoughts become things so fast. Don't worry that you worry, okay? Because the energy behind worry, even when fear is part of it, is nothing compared to the energy of hope, of love, of joy, of, of growth and glory. So as long as you are pointing that thing with love, joy, hope, love, positivity. I said love twice. Okay. Um, you're you're going to outweigh and prevail over thoughts of fear or worry. As long as you're doing both the positive stuff. The stuff in alignment with truth will be much, much stronger. So that's the difference between daydreaming, idle daydreaming, and constructive visualization. The energy behind it. And you decide the energy behind it. And, and no matter how much you fear, as long as you do what you can with what you've got from where you are, to think positively, even if it's infested with fear, and to show up positively, thy will shall be done. Jumbo fellow adventurers, it's Mike Dooley, time for a spiritual tune-up. This week, there seems to be a theme emerging between a creative visualization, daydreaming, and now bringing into that equation deep-rooted beliefs. Specifically, Mike, I've heard underlying negative subconscious beliefs can keep you from the life you want, no matter how many positive thoughts and affirmations you entertain. If I intellectually understand, I am love and come from love. Isn't that somewhere in the subconscious too? Or 
is the higher self in a place other than the subconscious? Oh my gosh, this is a really thoughtful question. Um, because we've all heard and know of the power of our beliefs. They are almighty. But as I frequently tell you, remind you, our beliefs are almighty because they allow us and encourage us to think along certain lines or they shut us down from thinking. And it is those thoughts we think or are denied that do or don't become the things and events of our lives. So the reason our beliefs are almighty is not because beliefs are more powerful than thoughts. It's because our beliefs regulate, constrict, and inspire our thoughts. So now here's a good question. Given that our beliefs have that power over our thoughts, but you and I can, can look out at the miracle of life and know that we are of the divine and know that our thoughts become things, doesn't that count? Even though we're not necessarily, you know, living all of our dreams suddenly, doesn't that count, the questioner implies, that somewhere in our psyche, perhaps as deep-rooted as our beliefs, we have this integral feeling, this knowingness that we are of the divine, and it just hasn't yet panned out yet, so to speak. Or, as the questioner says, is the higher self in a place other than the subconscious. Do you see the juice here? Well, let me strip it down and make it as simple as possible. I've got two scales, if you will. I've got the scale of our behavior, our words, our thoughts, our beliefs, and some might go further and say our knowingness. Okay, there's this one big panorama of the, the physical behavior and embodiment to the speaking, to the thinking, the imagining, um, the believing, the knowing, and, and the like. Okay, so here's this scale. I want you to realize that it is one fluid object, if you will, one fluid energetic essence whether you're behaving that way or knowing it or believing it or visualizing it. I talked yesterday about the underlying energy. Is there desire? Is there intention? Is there love? Um, those will fuel our thoughts into becoming things quicker than, you know, laissez-faire, passivity, kind of cool, maybe not. Um, so I want you to realize this whole energetic sequence from behavior to knowingness is one fluid body. Similarly, as we have earth and then we have air and lightness and water and consciousness, super consciousness, the divine, all of that's one continuum. And combine it with this continuum I just it's all one. It's not like our beliefs are here, and then there's a double padded door, and then there's our creative visualization, then there's our spirit, and then there's our physicality. You'll never be more human than you are today. You will never be more spiritual than you are today. There's no delineation. There's just different areas that we focus on, different chosen perspectives. And when we stop seeing ourselves as mere mortal, and we start seeing ourselves as the divine, as an ongoing waking practice, all of this fluidity comes to bear. And so the reason the person, the person asked this question is because they want clearly to be living more deliberately, creating more consciously, more friends, more laughter, more health, rejuvenation, healing, recovery, financial abundance, giggling and laughing. Hey, it's there to want, it's there to have, it's yours. It's totally yours. When we stop making these rules about this and that and other layers in my subconscious mind, let me go to the, to the question. I've heard underlying negative subconscious beliefs can keep you from the life you want, no matter how many positive thoughts. Bull crap. Baloney. There's, you decide on a moment by moment basis what you think and what you believe. And there's not this repository that's removed from you that you have to unwind and figure out because something was said when you were a child or in a past life that makes it too complicated. In, a, in an instant, there is healing from cancer. In an instant, there is 
uh, clarity of mind. In an instant, we can self-realize. In an instant, we are always a breath away from the mindset of abundance, laughter, camaraderie. And, and I want you to see that this is a massive fluid thing. Let me steer you to what I typically share as my process for installing empowering beliefs. Because beliefs are almighty for the reasons I laid out. Um, little processes and steps like this really help. Instead of looking for what your negative limiting beliefs are, enumerate a bunch of positive ones in the area you want transformation. Okay, uh, Money grows on trees. Uh, there's enough for everybody. Me having mine helps other people get theirs. My thoughts become things. I'm pushed on to greatness. I'm inclined to succeed. Uh, it does grow on trees. Uh, all that stuff. Write down all the beliefs. I'm worthy. Whether or not you believe them, write down really cool, empowering beliefs that you would love to say are mine. You know, th those are my beliefs. You know, um, money is easy to make. Money is easy to find. Money is easy to attract. Wouldn't those be great core beliefs that will rewire you? Think so. Write them all down. Step one. Step two. Study that list. Mull it over in your mind. Even if you don't make it physically, think about these truths that I've just shared about money and or health and or laughter and or healing and or remission and or recovery, whatever you want. Write down all those cool beliefs, how easy it is, how effortless it is, how natural it is. Um, and then study it and see the validity of it. Just see, dang it, that you are of God, by God, pure God. You're here to thrive, to know the truth, to love yourself. See that. You know that it's true. Don't let, you know, the peanut gallery and your other voices, the barking dog or your negative relatives. I mean, they're going to, they're always going to be there. Okay. So you just bark and you just whine and you just complain, but I know the truth and I see it. And look for evidence of it in your life, even if it's just little sparks, okay? And step three for installing empowering beliefs, and I'm going to tie this back into the continuums we were just talking about. Step three is every day, in some small way, act as if those were your beliefs. Act as if you knew you were worthy. Act as if you knew you were of the divine. Act as if it was easy to come into money. Act demonstrate, even move towards transformation as you know it is inevitably being pressed towards you this moment. That third step is the, is the clincher. That's how you install empowering beliefs. And you don't even have to know if or what your limiting beliefs were. But now take this approach for installing positive beliefs and combine it with the notion that that you are this one endless continuum of high and low, matter and ether and spirit, words and behavior, beliefs and knowings. And I want you to dance every single day in, in the light of truth. I want you to create a visualize. I want you to affirm. I want you to behave. I want you to exist eat, sleep, and breathe in this realm where it's easy, where you're supported, where you are loved, where your wish is the universe's command. Okay, because that's the truth. And forget about, well, what happened here? And what about the belief? And what, if you're working, if you've got a suppressed, invisible, limiting belief that's trying to hold you down, it's not even trying, it's just existing there as like, you know, a huge titanium wall. Okay, it's just there. But if at the same time you're affirming and visualizing and behaving that life is easy, that you are powerful, that everything's working out for you, that the, your wish is the universe's command, you will start creating new circumstances and new evidence that undermines this belief, even if you didn't know what it was. So, so to the Core of the question, can underlying negative subconscious beliefs stop your positive thoughts and affirmations from becoming the things and events of your life? No, it's one continuum and your positive thoughts, your affirmations, and your behavior will create a body of evidence that completely destroys and undermines that titanium and turns it into tinsel so that you can barge on through and live the rocking life that you chose to live, which is this one. 
There's nothing slowing you down. There's nothing you can't do. Not even yourself. You're inclined to succeed. Just be who you are. Exist in the present. Follow your heart. Think the good thoughts. That's your natural setting. When you have some worry, some worry, some negative thoughts, ah, laugh at them. Go ahead and worry your head off because I'm going to also do the positive things I know to do. And I'm going to get grounded and I'm going to get logical. I'm going to follow my heart and I'm going to use all of my faculties and I will arrive thy kingdom come. Jumbo, fellow adventurers, time for a spiritual tune-up. I'm Mike Dooley. Thanks for the great questions down below. Today's is uh, juicy to say the least. Uh, what, Mike, are we supposed to be doing with our lives? What are we supposed to be doing? Well, first of all, the, the question is a bit flawed when you read supposed to, okay? There is unlimited freedom. Freedom unimaginable. It's not like you're supposed to be doing anything. You're not supposed to be going out and loving people. You're not supposed to be cooperating. You're not supposed to be happy. You're not supposed to be anything. This is one big adventure to see what happens. But given the spirit that fills your cells and your DNA that brought you here, this t gigantic tidal wave of love and curiosity and wonder divine mind, given the nature of who we are and where we are, uh, the one thing that makes the most sense is for us to soar, for us to thrive, for us to play. Yes, for us to love, not because we're supposed to, because we just can't turn that stuff off when we are in a free and unfettered mind, when we are in our natural state, when we are not preoccupied thinking falsely that life is happening to us and we start seeing that we are happening to life. But it's okay. It's a big charade. It's a big game. It's being played out in the heart and the mind of God, if you will. So the best thing I could advise anybody at any point, and I'm certainly not the first to recommend this, is to follow your heart. Every single day, follow your heart. Do what you want to do. Go where you're led. Follow intuition. This is the wisest within you, your intuition. And it's all about joy. And I know at this crossroads in time and space where we are overwhelmed with sensory perception, when we are at the height, uh, oh, it's probably been worse, but the height of our ignorance as to who we really are. And we've been messing with the shoulds and we've been messing with the hows and we've been trying to do what we're supposed to do, whatever the heck that was. We become desensitized. It's like, I don't even know what I want to do anymore. I don't even know who I am anymore. I don't even know why I'm here anymore. So you ask this question. That voice is still inside of you. That sense of wonder is still so alive and well. You cannot extinguish it. So just be a little calm. Be a little quiet. Follow that impulse that takes you out. Say hi. Smile to a stranger. Follow your curiosity wherever it may lead. You don't have to worry that you're some savage animal beast that can't be trusted. You're pure God. You can be trusted. Other people can be trusted. It's those who think that they can't be trusted and that they think the world's a dangerous place that resort to all kinds of chaos and confusion because they're so far removed from following their heart and allowing themselves to soar. So follow your heart in the quest for bliss unending. And if it's not making you happy now, then do what you think might make you happy later on. And you will get your groove back on. You will find out who you really are. And then the most amazing thing happens when you start following your heart. <sighs> Lions and tigers and bears. Oh God, that's the best part of life. Because when these challenges start showing up, which they're bound to do as you follow your heart, it's by design you start realizing where you still have something else to learn and some other way that you could be more amazing and some other radical idea that can take you from here to an entirely new orbit, experiencing joy unimaginable today as you hear these words. That's what awaits you. So here, you are here to soar. You are here to thrive. And you will do that by following your heart out into the world where you, are, will you, where you will stub your toes where you will fall down and then you will get back up higher than you ever were before. So bless and greet and celebrate the lions and tigers and bears. They're a finite number. 
You are forever. They are temporary. You are their greater. You are their creator. You will rise above that which now torments you. Do you feel awkward? Do you feel lonely? Do you feel different? Do you feel sick? Do you feel tired? Are you broke? Are you broken hearted? This will pass. And this will reveal to you that you were always amazing and that you were right on time and that you were the person you were supposed to be and that you are who God most wanted to be. That's what you're supposed to do here in time and space. Sing and dance and follow your heart and it will get easier. And the lions and tigers and bears will get fewer. And then, oh my gosh, then, to the best of my deductive ability to reason, and from the little bits I've read that have confirmed this, you will come to a fork in the road. You will discover, because you followed your heart in your quest to soar, and you fell flat on your face, and then you soared even higher than you dreamed of, you will discover how powerful you are. You will discover how life is so easy that you've been happening to yourself. You've been happening to the world, that you are the reason the sun rises each day. And when you find out these magical truths that are present even as you hear these words, that are true even as you hear these words, you will come to a fork in the road. And you will either choose to spread wings you do not know you now have and soar beyond these sacred jungles of time and space with pure gladness and joy in your heart, with your posse, with your friends, or you're going to stick around a little bit longer, maybe a lot longer, to help others discover what you will by then have discovered, that you couldn't be more loved, and you couldn't be more powerful. And seeing other people light up as you are then lit up will be more valuable than you can possibly comprehend. This is what awaits. There's this fork in the road coming. Are you going to soar on? More power to you. Wonders await unimaginable. Or are you going to circle on back with your homies and uh, shine your light? When you get to that place, no matter what you choose, there's going to be more bliss. There's going to be more love. So if you stay here, it's not going to be like, well, I'm going to have to learn more lessons. No, the lessons are finite. They're far and few between at that level. There'll be nothing else for you to learn, just stuff for you to share, just stuff for you to teach. That's where you're headed. That's where we're going. That was our agreement. But we can tear up that agreement and you can soar on however you like. That's why we're here to see how easy it is, to see how loved we are, because it's a game, because it's a joy, because there's love everywhere. I didn't say you're here to love. You can't not love. You're bathed in love. Love is the in the atmosphere. You don't have to do those selfless things. Follow your heart into bliss. Learn your lessons. Be raised higher. And then go on or come back, circle around, and lift some others up. Wow, man, it doesn't get any better than a life in the jungles of time and space, especially when you're waking up like we are. Jumbo, fellow adventurers, happy fry, yay. It's Mike Dooley, time for a spiritual tune-up. And boy, the questions come in as if by design pertaining to a certain theme. And this is the week of thoughts and beliefs and uh, self-sabotage, like what's going on that you want something, but it hasn't shown up. And here comes a really super great question. Um, Mike, you spoke about not being held back by hidden limiting beliefs yesterday. I think the reason we assume that we are held back by invisible limiting beliefs is because after years of meditating and affirming and visualizing, perhaps we don't see the results we want in the here and now. So why would this happen? if it is not because of deeply held beliefs that counter what we are affirming. Okay, before I even give you the answer, let me just share how slippery a slope this whole odyssey becomes when we start assuming something's wrong because something doesn't line up the way we thought it would because we want something and it hasn't shown up yet does not necessarily mean something's wrong. Most of the time, nothing's wrong. And even if something's wrong, uh, there's mitigating factors and you can work around it. But if you're like 
there must be something wrong with me and it's deep and it's embedded and it's from my 12th century lifetime as a pi pirate. When you start adding that onto whatever it was, um, now you have that to contend with and it wasn't even the problem and there was maybe some other thing happening. Here are five reasons other than invisible limiting self-sabotaging beliefs, which I've already implied you can bust on through in earlier tune-ups this week. So invisible limiting beliefs ain't no thing. As long as you do what you can with what you got from where you are. But now let's look at those five things. Number one, perhaps everything, your machinery, your alignment is just flawless, spot on. But you've got some other priorities that are even bigger. Maybe your mom's sick, or maybe you know at a deep level that she's about to be sick, or maybe somebody else you care about, or maybe there's some other things maneuvering and you, you want to make sure that uh, other people or yourself or your health or your weight or your finances or your partner or meeting your partner or starting a family. Maybe these other things are all going on as well. And that's good. You cannot have too many dreams at one time. You cannot. All right. So don't worry about that. But we may not consciously place different priorities nor rank our dreams. Yet we do know what's more important, more urgent, more pressing. Sometimes it's, you know, how does I always forget that? More pressing. So the, it could be just a matter of priorities, which are just now working out fine. And so in the near future, you're going to have your manifestation because you've mastered your priorities and you took care of your P's and Q's. But then you say, well, it must be my beliefs. Well, now the priorities are in order but you've rained on your own parade and think it's your beliefs. And now you're going to have to untangle that. And now you don't expect, and now you don't believe as much because you've assumed that there's something wrong with you. And boy, is it complicated and murky and deep inside your subconscious mind. And it wasn't even the deal. Number two, if you have dreams that depend on who's, how's, where's, when's and other unimportant details while you might th think these things are all important they ain't squat man they're, they're, the universe always knows a better who a better how a better where a better when and details that you don't even know exist so as soon as you attach through micromanagement that it's got to be bobby jean or bruno or uh, by my birthday in the summer in saint lucia it's like all of these silly, unimportant rules where the universe is like, look, it was going to be Stanley in Paris or the slopes of Val d'Isere um, in the fall, the first snow when you're surrounded by, you know, more of your friends. But you don't know that that option exists. The universe knows all options. The universe knows all possibilities. And the universe isn't some kind of fake metaphor for trust and believe. It's like there is divine consciousness in every molecule and in every void, in every dimension, there is living intelligence that's tracking every thought, person, possibility all the time. And so if you just turn it over to the greater good and say, I want the best for all involved, including moi, the universe is like, I know how to do that. Oh my God, we're going to blow your little mind. But when you say it's got to be him and her and then and here and where, the universe is like, why are you doing this to me? There's so many better options. So if you are attached to a specific person behaving a specific way or a specific path through which you want your dream to come true or a specific timeline, pa, don't do timelines on yourself, fine, but not on the magic or, specific, you know, or unimportant details and all details are unimportant. If you're attached to that stuff, you are profoundly limiting divine intelligence. It's like a little toddler, a little baby that thinks they know what's best. It's like, you don't know. You really don't know. There's better TV shows. There's better toys, okay? Number three, incongruence. You dream of champagne and caviar or Rocky and Bruno or whatever, whatever, but then you don't follow through with action. You don't realize you need to be the moving part. You need to start. You take one step, the universe is free to take 10,000. 
You stop, the universe stops. You take one more step, the universe takes 10,000. So maybe the reason you're not taking action is because you don't believe, which is your premise, and that there's always the possibility of an invisible limiting belief. Or maybe you're not taking action because you don't understand the logistics of mystics and you don't realize that you must take these seemingly futile, sometimes embarrassing baby steps to unleash the magic and have the floodgates burst open. You must show up even when you don't know how your dream is going to come true. In fact, let me tell you, you don't know how your dream is going to come true. Don't mess with the cursed house. You can only know that it will come true so long as you're not micromanaging and your priorities are being allowed to play themselves out, your dream is coming true. Even though you don't know how, you must still do stuff all the time. Number four, something better is lining up. Maybe the reason you don't have what you've always wanted is a, a lot of these other reasons and or something better is lining up. And why would something be better lining up? Because you weren't insistent on it. Because you were showing up and taking action. And because the thing that you wanted perhaps came with some strings attached that you couldn't see. And so the universe is like, you've given me free reign. You're not insisting on a who or how or a when. You have at least left the door open for or better. You made your wish explicitly or implicitly with or better. Dear universe, I want Bruno or better. Even if you didn't say or better, but if you're okay with or better, a lot of people aren't. That's the issue. That's one of their problems. But if you're okay with or better, then the universe will always go with or better when there's some strings attached that would otherwise have disappointed you. I mean, you don't want to get Bruno and find out that he's got mama issues or something like that, right? I mean, wouldn't that be a bummer? And you've got to, you got to play mama to the guy and he's just go for or better. So the, it hasn't come true yet because you left the door open and you're in, you are congruent and there's not priorities. These other things, everything else is working out or better's coming. And number five, everything is awesome. Everything is perfect. You've done what you're supposed to do. And it just needed a teeny bit more time. Maybe the reason you don't have what you've always wanted, even if it's been years, even if it's been decades, even if it's like me, 50 years old before you got married, okay? You got busy doing other things. When that big ship, that big dream comes in, you're going to be like, oh, now I get it. And it was perfect. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you. Hallelujah. It was just perfect. It hasn't happened yet because it's about to happen. And there's reasons, perhaps these other four that I gave you, or perhaps, perhaps you did have an invisible limiting belief and it was having to negotiate the long way. And it's, you're going to get that phone call tonight, that phone call from your publisher, that phone call from whoever that's going to introduce you to whoever that's going to change your life. Maybe the reason it hasn't come true yet is because it's about to. And, and you were at risk of thinking, it must be my invisible limiting self-sabotaging beliefs. Well, it wasn't. But now that you've said that, you've got that to contend with. And because you've said that, as I already iterated in this, this presentation, now you've lost hope. Now you're sure something's wrong with you. So you don't have the optimism or the expectation. You don't have the in impetus to go out and take action tomorrow. It was going to happen tomorrow. But now that you're labeling yourself bad and broken and confused and messed up, it's like what would have been a certainty is now pushed further down the path. So how do you know whether or not any one of these five uh, um, are applying to you? The you're so inclined to succeed. You're, you're the eyes and the ears of God. You're so likely to get this all right and live the rest of your life in joy. You can even mess up and have some of these five or to a degree, almost all five. And the universe and the magic will still reach you. Okay, that's so cool, isn't it? But if you really want to make sure that you are spit and shine, ready to go super fast, make it happen, ASAP, of those five, perhaps the most important that you refrain from doing is the micromanagement. 
insisting on specific behavior from specific people, insisting on a how, the path that your dream will come true, insisting on a when or a where or unimportant details, all details are unimportant. If there's attachment, your dream might still come true. But if there's attachment, there's a possibility it'll never come true. If your dream is attached to a specific person behaving a specific way, you can't manipulate people, but you can have someone better. So I'm not saying there won't be a specific person ultimately, or how my dream came true story, or a beautiful details on a great timeline. All those things will play out, but you cannot insist ahead of time. So how do you navigate and make sure your big dream is going to come true as soon as possible when you're aware of these five possibilities I just enumerated? Number one, do not micromanage with insistence or attachment. Number two, you're doing something about your dream every day. Now, don't worry. Don't freak out. Don't think, oh, I haven't been doing that. You know, in some subtle way, I mean, at least affirm, at least visualize, but I'm specifically talking about baby steps. You know, knock on a door, do a web search, print your business cards, sign up for a dating website. You don't have to like any of those people, but at least do something to show the universe, I'm game, I'm here, I'm making steps. Remember, you don't know how your dream's gonna come true, but sometimes you take a little baby step and that emboldens your confidence and that arouses expectation. And the confidence in the expectation will make another door open, not even the one that you took the baby step on, right? So. Number one, you're not micromanaging. Number two, you're doing something about your dream consistently until it comes true. Okay? Little stuff. You don't, don't stress. You don't have to figure it out. You don't have to hit the home run. Just create possibilities, stirring up the magic by showing up in life. And number three, even if you do have invisible, limiting, self-sabotaging beliefs, that are just stopping you, stopping you. Hey, that's a possibility. Don't assume that it's what's going on. But even if you did, as I have shared recently and in other tune-ups, the way to bulldoze invisible limiting beliefs is you enumerate the beliefs you want to hold. I'm worthy, I'm deserving, I'm hot, I'm desirable, I'm abundant, I'm happy, I'm joyful, I'm powerful, uh, you know, um, it's easy. You just write down beliefs you wish were yours. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. See their validity is step two. Just study that belief. So of course, you're the eyes and the ears of God. Of course, you were born worthy. Of course, you're living in the winner's circle of reality creation on the razor's edge. And all things are possible for you, no matter where you've been, no matter where you are. See the validity of these beliefs that you want to install. And then Similar to the last point, you show up, show up. You act as if they're your beliefs. You act as if it's working now. You act as if it's a sure thing. You prepare, you demonstrate, you playfully look at life as if you were already in that place where the dream came true. And you predicate your behavior, your words, and your thoughts on that vision. So that's why I say don't assume just because you want it and don't have it that there's some diabolical crossed wires in your mind from early childhood or a past life or an ancient spiritual. Who could deal with that? Be happy. Follow your heart. Take action. Show up. Prepare to be astounded. Well, there you have it. One more week's worth of spiritual tune-ups. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed what you just saw or heard, please share with a friend. Uh, thumbs up, like, follow, whatever may be the case on the platform you're now experiencing this. If you want more inspiration, every single day I send out a note from the universe. Right now it's going out to a million people. We'd love to add you to that list. Enjoy. Thoughts become things. See you next time.